Okay, I know what you're thinking as this video starts. The paper is crooked again. Actually, what you're about to find is the paper is not crooked. I actually just wrote crooked across the page. But anyway, let's uh, kind of move on with this a little bit. What this video is going to be about is this. How do we convert the three different temperature scales, whether it's degrees Fahrenheit, degrees Celsius, or good old Kelvin? I'm still writing crooked for whatever reason. But anyway, so here, I'll just twist the paper now so it at least looks straight. So there's three different temperature scales, and what we want to be able to do is convert between each one. Well, let's kind of take a look at those temperature scales, for instance. Both of them, they all have, like, some common values. For example, freezing point. Freezing point in Fahrenheit, we've got a whopping 32. Celsius, 0. And Kelvin starts at 273. Now, there's also, we've got to establish those boiling points on those scales. Celsius, to me, being metric, is the easiest to remember with this nice little 0 to 100. Fahrenheit, 212. And oddly enough, Kelvin actually goes to 373. Meaning if you increase one degree Kelvin, you increase one degree Celsius, vice versa. If you lose a degree Celsius, you lose a degree Kelvin. So these two are very much in check with each other. Now, what makes Kelvin unique is the fact that on the Kelvin scale, we actually have a firm zero point, known as absolute zero. And if you're familiar with it much about kinetic energy, that's the point at which... Some, when something gets hot, its vibrations get larger and faster. Ah, and then as you cool it off, the vibrations get closer together until eventually I'm getting so cold and absolute zero. Uh, Celsius, uh, negative 273, because like I just said, every degree change in Celsius or in Kelvin happens in Celsius as well. And Fahrenheit over here is about whopping negative 459, so kind of cold. Maybe 458, maybe kind of, you know, whatever. But it's somewhere in that ballpark for absolute zero. So how do we convert? How do we convert temperatures from one scale to another? And we're constantly doing this in science, having to convert these temperatures. So it's pretty important that you know. Well, to me, you really only need two equations, but we'll write three down, which is kind of the standard thing. Three equations. K is equal to... C plus 273.15. Now, I hate to do this, but I rarely ever do the .15. I'm, I'm a little lazy. I just do 273. Anyway, next equation. Well, oddly enough, I remember 9 fifths C plus 32, and that is my Fahrenheit equation. And then if you're capable of doing algebra, if you've memorized that one, then all you got to do is subtract 32 from both sides, so your last equation is F minus 32. And then the opposite of timesing by 9 over 5 is timesing the whole thing by 5 over 9. And so now we've got a Celsius. And most books, most teachers, they're going to give you those three equations to do. Uh, just excuse me, I'm just going to mark this 0.15 out of my way just to kind of clean it up and keep it simple. So let's kind of do a few basic temperature conversions using those basic formulas. Well, how about this one? How about 98.6 degrees? Degrees Fahrenheit equals what temperature in? Writing crooked again. That's, well, maybe the desk is slanted. I don't know. Well, it would be easy if I just said let's go to Celsius. But you know what? I read your minds. You're saying, no, no, make it a little harder than that. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's take this all the way to Kelvin. Because if you can do this, then you should be able to do any temperature conversions. And the reason why I say that is it's going to require two conversion factors. That's right, two conversion factors, or two formulas, should I say. You see, we don't have a formula for Fahrenheit and Kelvin. It goes back like to inches and feet and miles. What does Fahrenheit and Kelvin have in common with each other? Well, Fahrenheit and Kelvin have Celsius in common with each other. So, if I want to find Kelvin, I must first know Celsius. So, can I find Celsius from Fahrenheit? Celsius to Fahrenheit. Yes, if I know Fahrenheit, I can find Celsius. 
So I'm going to go ahead and write this down. Celsius equals 5 over 9. I always write my equations, and I encourage you to do the same so that you memorize these equations. F minus 32. So now all I've got to do is 98.6 minus 32. That's in the parentheses. Now I'll be honest. The most common mess-ups I've found over 15 years with students in these two equations are their orders of operations. Of course, now with the fancy calculators, most kids just type them straight in their calculators. But maybe you don't get to use a calculator, or maybe you're kind of cheap, and next thing you know, you're breaking out some old TI from 1979. But anyway, so what we've got to do is with this equation, you've got to subtract then multiply, follow your parentheses. So in the case of this one, kick the stand a little bit, we've got 98.6 minus 32, and that's 66.6 when you subtract times 5 over 9. And yes, my calculator could have done it all at once, but I like to be a little old-fashioned. That's an even 37 degrees Celsius. Ooh, fascinating. So you have found Celsius is 37. But remember, the whole purpose of this problem is asking you to find Kelvin. Well, luckily we have a Kelvin equation. Kelvin is equal to C plus 273. So Kelvin is equal to C plus 273. Well, we've already got Celsius. It's 37. So all we've got to do is 37 plus 273. And add those two together, 37 plus 273, 310. Now, I always like to bring up sig figs when we're kind of doing this a little bit. And most people get kind of off here, 98.63 sig figs. Ooh, how do we make this three sig figs? 3.10 times 10 to the 2. And that would get us three sig figs in that answer, if that's something that we were after in this answer. But anyway, let's do one more of these types of problems. Well, i tell you what. Let's take a look at a solar flare. Now, solar flares cool down a lot after they leave the surface of the sun. Um, I've read one thing before, said solar flares, sometimes out to where they go, by the time they've kind of lost a little temperature, they drop down to about 5,800 Kelvin, which is, you know, seems pretty warm. But what if we were talking about that to somebody who really did not understand science? So let's see if we can't convert Kelvin to Fahrenheit. Well, I know what you're saying. Let's go to the equation sheet. Bam. Well, I only have one equation for Fahrenheit, and I must know Celsius. Dang it. So... Fahrenheit is equal to 9 fifth C plus 32. But I don't know Celsius. I've got Kelvin. I wish I had an equation. Hmm. You see, we're back to that problem. Kelvin and Fahrenheit have something in common. That's Celsius. So I wish I had an equation with Kelvin and Celsius in it. Oh, wait, I do. Kelvin, Celsius, 273. I've got an equation. Now, this is where somebody would be like, but it don't, wow, well, messed up. Somebody would be like, but it don't say C equals K. Yes, unfortunately, we do have to know small amounts of algebra. It doesn't say C equals, but if you've got K, you better be able to find Celsius. All I've got to do is plug in 5800 for my Kelvin, and then how do we do the algebra on this? Well, subtract 273 from both sides. So 5800 minus 273 means this temperature is 5527 degrees Celsius when I convert. Now all I got to do is plug that in over here. 9 fifths times 5527 now, notice your order of operation. This is where people mess up. You multiply this 
Then we're going to add the 32. So in this one, we multiply, then add. And so in this case, in this one, let's see, 9 over 5, oops, hey, dumb calculator, times 5527. And now I'm going to add my 32 to it, 9998998.6 degrees Fahrenheit. This is another great sig fig question too. 5800 is two sig figs. So how do I round that off to two sig figs? Well, you could round it off to 9981. Well, that's four sig figs. So I got it. So you'll say round it to 9980. Well, that's three sig figs. So you still haven't solved your significant figure thing. Well, 99, but that's not right because 99, that 8 would round the 9 up. Dang it. What do I do? The 9, this gets rounded, which in turn rounds the other 9. So you end up at 10,000. So how do you get 10,000 to two sig figs? One, two, three, four. 1.0 times 10 to the 4, oop, what am I, Fahrenheit? Degrees Fahrenheit. Now, depending on your teacher, this might be very happy just to have that. But if you're trying for some sig figs, you're going to have to round it to 10,000 and then change it to scientific notation. Now, I hopefully I haven't scared you with just these problems. This is as hard as it gets. It doesn't get any harder. Does it get easier? Oh, yeah. Because a lot of times you'll get a problem that just says, for example, a refrigerator is supposed to be 4 degrees Celsius. Well, most people at home don't have a Celsius thermometer, so you have a Fahrenheit one. So all you do is find your equation for Fahrenheit, 9 fifths C plus 32. And you just plug in 9 fifths times 4, then add your 32. And there. That's the simple. This is more your common one. What I've t taken you here using two equations is your more complicated. But anyway, that's a pretty good brief overview. My pen is down. It's 9 o'clock at night, and me, I am done teaching for the day. But everybody else, you stay up. Study hard. Let me know how this turns out for you.